Hello stamping friends! It's Really Robin Stamps here. I am Robin Armbrecht. Today is March 12th, 2021 and you are joining me for a crafting play date that I do live on Facebook. So thank you for joining me. Today we are going to play with um, masks and stencils and some butterflies. So let's get busy and I'll show you what I've got on my stamping table. All right. Welcome, welcome. We are gonna do some crafting today. Let me zoom you in. All right. So we have this new butterfly bundle, which has been grabbing all of my attention this week. But I wanted to do something just a little bit different. And I wanted to just kind of encourage you to get into your um, stash of products and not really think about, um, hold on, let me fix this a little bit, the camera, sorry for the jiggling. A little bit better. Okay, so I wanted you to think about how to um, kind of um, use what you have, but yet um, kind of work on some techniques that maybe you haven't done for a while. So I'm going to use this new bundle. However, I think that you're going to find that you're going to be able to um, create what I'm creating with a bunch of different things that you probably already have something similar. So let me just review a little recap. Last Friday, we talked about this bundle. And what it is, it's called um, Butterfly Brilliance a Bundle. And it has two pieces to it. It's got the background stamp, which is Butterfly Brilliance Stamp Set, and it has Butter Brilliant Wings Dies. So bundled together for $54.75, you can get both of those things. Um, this is going to be a new item in the... Um, annual catalog that's going to go live in May and we are getting to have an early release of it something to kind of get a get us excited now what's not going to be in the catalog is the paper that you can get right now so you can get a pack of this natural touch specialty paper which is kind of like a little bit of a glossy um, wood grained paper you can also get um, this six by six pack of paper, 48 sheets. Um, but this is only available while supplies last, the paper is. So I have purchased um, enough paper such that if you order this bundle um, from me in March, I will give you a sheet, um, a six by six sheet of all of those papers um, for free. Okay, I think that's what I wanted to tell you about that. All right, here's this beautiful paper. I gotta show it to you one more time. One side has all the kinds of little butterflies. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I only pulled out five for some reason. The other side is beautiful backgrounds, look like watercolors um, and then little patterns. It's just beautiful. All right, yeah, I don't have the comments turned on. Let's go, there we go. Hello, Cheryl. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lynn. Thank you so much for joining me today. All right, let's get going here. So this stamp comes as a background stamp. It's one big stamp, and so you can use it on your largest acrylic block, which is block F. So I'm going to show you how to stamp using the big acrylic block. So we are going to cut out um, some butterflies to use today. So I'm going to use my black tuxedo black memento ink and I'm going to ink this big background stamp. Like that. 
and then I'm going to actually do it the process upside down. So the piece that you need to stamp the all the butterflies to cut them out is a piece that's six inches by four and three fourths. This is um, a background stamp that is actually a little bit. Let me just kind of show you with a card. It peeks over the card, so it creates a, in a complete background off the edges. So if you want to cut out the butterflies, you have to make a piece that's bigger than a quarter sheet of a card. The best way to do a big background stamp like this is to just do the process upside down. It's really hard to handle the large block and to get it put onto the um, cardstock the way you want it. So I usually just do this with my background paper, I fold it over like that, and then I just rub my hands over the entire block like that. And then when you peel that off, then you've got your gorgeous butterflies ready to be cut out. All right, so let me show you another way though. I think this is a great way to utilize um, your Stamparatus with this. I'm gonna just take my stamp off of this block and then I'm gonna put it on here. So I'm gonna grab another piece of four and three fourths and I'm going to just kind of line that up right there and then without smudging, hopefully, we'll just drop that down there. It already has a little residual ink on it, so I don't want to wiggle it too much. All right, then I'm going to pick that up. And then I'm going to keep it where right where it's at and re-stamp it. Of course, I can't find the magnet. Hold on. Hold, please. Let me get this magnet out. There we go. I'm just going to do a little bit down there. Now I'm going to re-stamp it. With background stamps, you know, you have to apply pressure um, evenly on all the areas, which is sometimes kind of hard to do. So um, by using the Stamparatus with this big background stamp, let's say you miss an area, you can just easily pick it back up and stamp it again. All right, so there we've got um, that there we've got that stamped again. Now see how that is just a little bit lighter right there. I'm going to go ahead and just ink it again in those spots and then re-stamp. And since my paper didn't move, I know that those images are going to go exactly in the same place. There you go. Now they're nice and dark. Okay, so let's let me just show you how these get cut out because it's way fun. I love how Stampin' Up! put this stamp set together because it just makes it really easy to get a bunch of butterflies um, all at the same time. So I'm going to use the one die that cuts out all the butterflies at the same time. It looks like this. I'm going to line it up on the butterflies. And I'm going to use just a little piece of washi tape to um, hold it down so it doesn't wiggle on me. One on the top and one over here. Okay. And now we'll run that through the cut and emboss machine. There we go. And there you've got, boom, all of those lovely, lovely, lovely butterflies. Isn't that awesome? So not only with this stamp set can you um, cut out the stamped images, you can just cut out these images, you know, in plain cardstock as well. I did them in white here, but you could cut them out in different colors if you just kind of wanted something that um, didn't have a lot of detail and you just wanted some simple butterflies. The other thing that comes with this um, 
die set are the detailed parts of all these butterflies. So you can, I'm just showing you here how they match up. This isn't how you would cut them out, but they match up with these butterflies so that you can stamp them and then you could cut out the detailed images and mount them on your stamps. So this is this one, you could do that and then you would have a double, double butterfly there. So I went ahead, just for the purposes of this video, I went ahead and I just cut out a whole bunch. So I, not only do I have all these lovely stamped butterflies ready to be colored. All right, we're just gonna put all of those in this little thing here. I went ahead and stamped, I'm sorry, I went ahead and cut out um, all of the detailed images from these dies as well. Those are going to go on a card in just a second. And then I went ahead and cut out um, the butterflies in vellum and then in the colors that I'm using today and just going to put them in a nice big thing and they're all ready to go. You can just plop butterflies on um, as you play with them and, and um, now we're all ready to go. All right, so what have we done so far? We've stamped the butterflies, cut them out, and by doing so, we created this great, this little great leftover piece, which is gonna be our stencil. So today we're talking about stencils and masking. Um, and this is a great topic to bring back because now Stampin' Up! has these new blending brushes, um, which if you haven't purchased yet, um, I think you're gonna really like them. We've got lots of ways that you can add color to paper. We've got Stampin' Sponges, and we've got the Foam Brayer sponge, and we've got finger daubers. I love all of these. They all work really well. Um, this is kind of a new item that um, kind of takes your, your blending to a new level because you can get a really smooth finish to it. So I'm going to bring out this um, package of decorative stencils that um, Stampin' Up! sells. They're called decorative masks. They're on page 146, you get the set for $6. And we're gonna use these kind of along with the, the stencils that we're making here. So this, I'm gonna call this a stencil, um, my negative butterfly image here. And let me show you what we can do with this. So let's bring back in the Stamparatus because the magnets will help us hold what we have. And this time, I'm going to take a little bit smaller piece um, that's not going to stand, uh, it's not going to fit all of the butterflies on it. And that's because I want this piece to fit on the card. All right. So I'm going to just kind of center that right here in the corner where the Stampin' Up! logo is, just so I can reorient myself really well. This piece is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth, so it's just a little bit smaller. I'm going to also clean this off here because I'm gonna reset it to stamp onto this white paper like that. I'm just using a baby wipe. All right, so let's put this where we want it to be. Like that, and we'll pick it up like that. Okay, so now we're going to stamp it. In black again. Now this magnet is going to be in the way pretty much wherever um, because it's such a large stamp. So I'm just going to move it out of the side. But I know where I can realign it on this edge here. So we're going to stamp the butterflies. Perfect. All right. I'm going to bring back the baby wipe and I'm going to wipe that ink off of my tray here. So now we're going to put this back in here and we're going to overlap with the stencil that we created by cutting them out. And we're just going to make a simple background with these butterflies. So 
Let me put that magnet on there, and I'm just going to use another little masking piece right there. All right, so I told you um, we're going to try to keep things simple today, right? So um, I went with my um, color theory, and I don't know why this has just always worked for me, and I just feel like it's kind of um, a good go-to thing when you're trying to think about what to do. Just look at your paper and um, pick out a red, a blue, and a green color, all right? And then find everything you have that coordinates with that, red, blue, green. And um, you'll find that you can just create some great color combinations with that. So I picked um, Granny Apple Green, Calypso Coral, and Bermuda Bay. So the red, the red can be an orange or a pink, it doesn't matter. Any blue, any red, any um, green, and they, it all works. So here, let me just kind of prove this to you here. So I stamped, or I punched out some butterflies with my other punch. So here we've got real red, granny apple green, and balmy blue. All right, this is one of my absolute favorite color combinations because it just looks so pretty. Um, you, you, you know, may or may not have those colors, but let's say you don't have granny apple green, you have um, old olive still works, still looks beautiful. Let's say you don't want to use real red, you want to use a pink, put in Melon Mambo or one of the pinks. All right, so you can kind of see how this works. Um, you can do, so let's do, so this was the color combination that um, was in, let's see, hold on. There it is. So this is the color combination that was in that free celebration paper, which was um, paper blooms. It had um, Night of Navy and Rose Rococo and Soft Sea Foam, red, blue, green. You've got this great color combination. All right, let's say you want it to be more pastel though. You wanna make um, a baby card or something, then you could just bring in a lighter blue, all right? Um, red, blue, green. Let's say you wanted to do a completely all bright color combination then you could do, pick from the, the brights, do Pacific Point, Melon Mambo, and Granny Apple Green. Let's say you wanted it to be more subtle, <clears throat> then you could bring in Night of Navy, Cherry Cobbler, Garden Green, and you've got this beautiful color combination. This combination also works when you're coloring things because you've automatically got like, um, a you know plant color a green color to use if you're coloring stems and leaves and things like that and then you've got a beautiful you know, flower color and an accent color and just by changing let's take out the night of navy let's put misty moonlight so you've got just another just slightly different tone of what you you know can put together there and let's say you wanted just to add something a little bit light then put um put the balmy 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 blue, yes, that's the right name. Balmy blue in there. And then maybe change this out for pear pizzazz. So you just, you know, punch out your um, cardstock like this with little circles or something and then play with this. See what red, blues, and greens you have um, and just play with it. Okay, enough about color theory. This, that is, that's my personal red, blue, green theory. So we're gonna go with these colors today. So all my cards are gonna be made with these colors. So I got out the ink pads. In these colors I got out my stamp and blends in these colors looks like I'm missing a green one I must have dropped it somewhere and then I got out the cardstock in those colors and then for accents I'm just going to use to my two favorite white ribbons the polka dot tool ribbon and the crinkled seam binding these are both great because you can color them with your ink pads or the blends or the blending brushes so you can change it into any color you want so those are the items that I'm going to use on all these cards. So let's go ahead and start blending with our stencil. Most important thing about stenciling is to just make sure your stencil is secure because so you don't want it to wiggle. So I'm going to take um, first the granny apple green and I'm going to get that on my blending brush. And then I'm going to just do this very lightly. 
right over that stencil. So there's the green. Let's do another green one over here. All right, and let's do some Bermuda Bay. And we'll do this one in blue. So I'm just gonna do two butterflies in each color. See, this is, yeah, you gotta keep that. Keep that in the same spot. There we go. Oopsie, yeah, I need to secure it in one more location here. There we go. Okay, and then the last one I'm gonna bring in is the Calypso Coral. Like that. So I just did it really lightly. You could keep going and make this really dark. All right, but let's just lift it up and see what we have here. So now you've got your butterflies just beautifully, lightly shaded um, with that stencil. So you could put together a card very simply by just mounting that um, on some black and then one of the colors that you use to stencil, add a little greeting. There's our little white embellishments. Okay, so let's do, let's just step this up. Let's put this back. We're gonna double stencil. I'll tell you what that means. So I'm gonna realign this with where I had it before and get these to stick a little bit better here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is bring in one of the decorative masks like that, and I'm gonna just lay that over the top of the other stencil. And so now we're gonna add some polka dots. So I'm gonna go back and do the same thing with the same colors. And I'm gonna push a little bit harder so that the second stencil, which is the polka dots, is going to get a little darker. Let's move on to the Bermuda Bay. So I'm just going right on top of where the holes are for the butterfly stencil. Because that's the only part that's gonna show up on the card. And lastly, we've got the Calypso Coral. Okay, you can see how that works. All right, so let's take this guy off. You can see the polka dots and we'll take that off. And then those polka dots end up just being only where those butterflies are. So now we've got some pretty polka dot butterflies. And so let me show you how that looks in a card. Same design as the first. Um, I just used a little polka dot ribbon instead since we we're talking about polka dots. Isn't that cute? So this was the first one, which is absolutely gorgeous. And then adding some polka dots just makes it, gives it a little something, something extra. All right. So there's one idea with stenciling, some double stenciling. The other thing that you can do, of course, is you can stamp your butterflies on a piece of, um, colored cardstock and then go back in with the stencil and then you just get a nice subtle monochromatic kind of um, background where those um, butterflies are kind of colored in. Gives it a nice little, uh, nice little shadow effect. All right, so let me show you something else with the stencil before I put this guy away. Let's go back with our stencil here. 
instead of stamping it first, we're just going to get the outline of the, um, what is Robin trying to say? I Instead of stenciling over <laughs> butterflies, we are just going to make the shapes of the butterflies. And instead of coloring each butterfly individually, we're going to color them, kind of make sure that each butterfly has a little bit of every color. So I'm gonna put overlap there with the greens. So there's a little bit of green in each one, and then we'll do some coral. Again, I'm just going really lightly. Because this is just gonna be a background. Do a little bit up there and then we'll bring in the Bermuda Bay. Yikes, had a lot on there. That's okay. This is just a background. No worries. Some blue. So now we've got just a little bit of color, all the colors in every one of the butterflies. And they overlap a little bit and it just looks pretty. All right like that. Isn't that cool? All right, so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to bring in these butterflies that I had already cut out out of the detailed images and we're going to attach them on top of of what of the butterfly that they match. It's like a puzzle now. I have to figure out which one goes where. So I'm just gonna put glue on the inside, like underneath the um, abdomen of the butterfly so that the wings will stick up. Like that. So you can see how this is coming off of the edge of um, the paper because the background stamp, as I told you, um, it, it overlaps the paper. I am missing a butterfly. Hold on here. like that. So we're going to actually make a card out of this one. Let's move this. So this card is going to be Bermuda Bay as the base. And then I'm going to add some Calypso Coral on top of that. All right, so this guy is gonna go on top of here, but we're going to trim off all the little bits that stick out over the edge. So I'm just gonna hold it upside down and trim them off. What is everybody up to today? Looks like it's gonna be rainy tomorrow here where we are in Springfield, Illinois. So I think today's the day to get out and do something. Take a walk. That's what I'm gonna do this afternoon. All right, so now I just trimmed those and that's going to fit right on top of the layer of coral.
Isn't that pretty? So springy. I'm going to finish it off using this stamp set called Oval Occasions. Um, it's got some great little um, greetings in there. So I'm going to take um, one of the greetings, the happy birthday. Like that. And I'm going to use the um, oval punch. This is the double oval punch that is designed to coordinate with this stamp set. So I'm going to cut out the smaller greeting one oval and then I'm going to cut out in the other coordinating color in granny apple green. And then we'll add that to the top of that. So now we've got a layered greeting. This is kind of like, it's not really a scalloped oval. It's like a, almost like a pinking shears, but not quite as pointy. Um, it's a little bit more rounded and it looks really cute. I like to just take my fingernail and like go around the edges of that and it just kind of makes the um the little points kind of stick up a little bit and gives it a little bit kind of an interesting little texture so i'm going to do that and then pop that up on the card with some dimensionals like that this is the hard part so you have to like kind of cover up a little bit of one of your butterflies so i'm going to do it right there and then Last but not least, we're going to take some of our beautiful rhinestones. And because I've got all these colors that coordinate, I've got the blends that coordinate with the paper, that coordinate with the ink color, I'm going to use my um, Stampin' Blends to color in on the rhinestones. And then that will match all the colors on my card. So let's put a couple of these around the card in those little empty spaces right there. Whoops, stay. Now it's stuck to me. Wait a second, where'd it go? <laughs> totally lost the green one. That's not it. Let's make another one. It's going to show up on my sock later probably or Who knows? All right, there we go. So now we've got um, the finished card and it just all has all the coordinating colors. All right, so that's how you can use kind of the stencils and the detailed images. All right. Telling you, I got a lot, a lot to show you. I hope you've got a nice, a nice cool drink next to you so that you are tucked in for this. Okay, now let's just take one of the other stencils. Just I want to show you really quickly another thing that you can do. I'm gonna lay that on top of my white. This again is a trimmed piece of um, basic white. So instead of, you know, just doing um, each individual section, I'm going to do like rows. So I'm just going to pick a row kind of diagonal like that. And then I'll skip two and I'll do another one. I'm just going all the way across where the white is. Nope, oh, see, I've already moved it. And then we'll do... One, two, so this last one over here, you see what I'm doing. And we would take the green and do the green. And then do the coral. Like that. So 
then you've got this great little colored background. It's really light. It almost looks pastel, even though all these colors that we're using are, are brights. And this is where you can pull in now some of the um, other detailed butterflies. So let's just mount that on our paper. Again, these are very simple cards that just kind of use your paper and your ink and whatever stamp sets you have. And let's take some of our matching butterflies. We'll put a greeting on here. I think this looks like it could be a baby card. So I am going, I need one of those. So I'm going to go ahead and make it a baby card. That is one of the greetings that comes in this Oval Occasions stamp set. And then all we have to do is attach these cute little butterflies wherever you want them. Stay, there we go. Like that. And again, use your blends. You can coordinate all the little rhinestones or whatever kind of embellishment you have that's plain, you can spice it up by using your blends. And I'm just going to put the same color that I have for the, um, for the butterfly and I'll just put that right there on a little abdomen like that. So we've got this cute little card. So let's say you wanted to add some of this um, polka dot ribbon to your card. We'll kind of ma make it match. You can just take your um, brush or a sponge and you can sponge onto your ribbon. Flip it over, get the other side, and then you've kind of, you've got ribbon that coordinates exactly with your card. So this was the granny apple green. Just gonna make a small little, just a little knot like that. And then put that right there. And so you've got some, everything to coordinate. Okay. Let's move on to the next little stenciling technique. So this one's really cool because you're saying right now, but I don't have the butterfly set, Robin, and I'm not sure I wanna get the butterfly set. That's okay. Totally look at your stash, look at what you have because you've got punches and you have got dies and all of them, um, all of them will work for some kind of stenciling. All right, so we're gonna do this technique. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the detailed um, butterfly image. I'm gonna bring back in the cut and emboss machine. I'm just gonna get it right in the middle. And run that through. Now I've got a stencil. I'm just gonna whack my um, butterfly, pardon the noise, on the edge of my table to help knock out a lot of those um, little pieces. And then I'll poke the rust out with my scissors. Okay, so now, so this came right out of here. 
And what's really cool here, I'll pull out this one that I had already done. I did a sheet of these. So when you cut out the image with these detailed dies, it's the exact same size as the stamped ones. Okay, so let's let's just say you didn't want to cut out the whole big stencil. You just wanted one butterfly. You cut them out with this. It's the same size um, as the whole sheet of butterfly dies. So you can fit things right back into where they went. But we're gonna use ours, ours as a stencil first. Let me get, finish cleaning that out. There we go. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. Let's bring another piece of white. We're gonna use this as our stencil. I'm just gonna kinda tilt this butterfly kinda sideways as we do with butterflies. Then I'm going to take my Granny Apple Green and I'm just going to make the shape of this butterfly. Right there on my card fronts, okay? So that's what we've got. I'm gonna put that back exactly where it was. And then I'm gonna put this one back in the detailed one, and I'm gonna take our Bermuda Bay, and I'm gonna go right over that one, and that is going to give detail where all those little holes are on this guy. Turn it around. Okay, I think I've got it. All right, so when you take this out and you take this out, then you've got this beautiful little stencil butterfly. Isn't that cute? And then you've also got this one already colored and ready to go and they coordinate, look like just like that, they coordinate together. And all you need to do is pop it onto a card. This time I just, I uh, stamped thank you all around the background. Got a little busy, but I kind of, I kind of like it. And so you can easily put that into a card, just like that. But then of course you're left with this little mask right here, right? So don't let that go to waste. Just do some more stenciling on it. Take your colors. And just make a beautiful background. Let's get a little more on the edges of this butterfly. So now you've got this nice little swirly background. Obviously I did that really quickly, but um, you can take your time with it. You can double, double mask it. You can see I like to live dangerously. I'm not, I'm not attaching any of these stencils, so don't do what I'm doing. Definitely stick your um, stencils down. So I'm just doing now the second, um, second stencil right on top of that. And then when you take that off, you've got just this beautiful little patterned background on what you just did. And then you can just put in one of those beautiful little butterflies that you created and boom, you've got a card. Isn't that lovely? Let me just show you how I colored the butterfly. I used the Stampin' Blends. And I just used both shades of the blends. I'll keep this out here so you can see. And I just kind of worked from outside in on the leaves. So I did light green and then I did dark green where it's already darker right there. And then I blended those together with the light 
like that and just kind of drew that color that way did the same thing this way and then I took the lighter Bermuda Bay and did it out like that into the green and then I took the darker one right on the outside and then blended those together with the lighter. I took a little bit more time than I'm doing right now, but then I went back over with the green and just kind of blended where those colors meet together and it just creates this really pretty kind of turquoise green. So you've got both of the colors in there and they just blend together. Okay, stencil, stencil, stencil. We got all kinds, all kinds. Okay, couple other things to show you. This is a sample that I made with that natural touch um, background paper. And I took a um, blending brush and I took crumb cake um, first and it wasn't dark enough so then I went to soft suede and I just I just rubbed it right into this um, background paper and it really brought out all of the grains that are in that paper so you can see this is before and then this is after I sponged it and of course I first cut out um, actually I didn't because I've got two so I did the whole sheet of the natural um, wood paper and then I cut out the butterfly so now I've kind of got two different little um, things that I can can do and it contrasts because I've colored on that paper so here's an example of the detailed butterfly under um, showing over where you've stamped it so you can just kind of see the stamping adds a little bit of detail um, underneath it just adds a little extra a little extra something something not really stenciling, but I made that card. I thought it was pretty cool. Okay, here's one more idea. And this would be great. This is a great technique to do with your, um, any punch that you have. So if you've got circle punches, you've got um, dies that are different shapes, you can just kind of create a space on your card for a greeting. So I'm going to take this butterfly and I'm going to use him later. So I'm going to flip him around because he's the same. He's basically the same both ways. So I'm going to use the back side and put that on there. And then I'm going to take the Calypso Coral and I'm just going to hold this in the middle and I'm just going to brush out starting from on the butterfly going off towards the edge of the white cardstock. So instead of swirling this by brushing it, you kind of see the brush marks, but they kind of look cool because they overlap. Now that one got a little dark there, but you get the idea. So I'm just gonna brush that all the way around like that. And what we're gonna do is just create a negative, a negative space with this die. So when we take that off, now we've got this bright um, white little space where we can stamp a greeting. So I'm gonna take this one, thank you for your kindness, from the Oval Occasions stamp set. Isn't that lovely? <clears throat> Basic black marker to the rescue. Whew. So. all right so we've got the greeting there and then I want I have to show you these dies these are like becoming my new fabulous favorite dies these are called um what are they called a touch of whimsy a bit of whimsy whimsy it's got the word whimsy in it um and all it is is these little stitched um kind of funky stitch shapes. I'll show you what it does on your card. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna give it a border. A 
like that. This is the second largest, so the there's one even bigger than this that will go around the whole front um, of a, car, a card quarter. So this doesn't cut anything, it just adds stitching to your project. So we've just got this cute little row of stitching all the way around that. So it just kind of creates this great little effect. And to make this into a card then, let's go ahead with our corals. It's gonna be kind of a monochromatic card. There's those dies. I'm gonna take just kind of a petal pink. It's, a, it's another little kind of off shade for um, Calypso Coral. It's a nice lighter version of it. I feel like they go together really, really well. I'm gonna add that as the background and then put that on the card front. Like that. So you can use circles. I mean, circles are awesome if you do a little um, stenciling around circles. I'm gonna use the, um, the new opal rounds and color these. Let's do a large and a medium and a, two smalls. I guess there's only two sizes there. My eyes are deceiving me. Looks like large and small. And we'll put those on the card front. Like that. And then a little ribbon to finish it off. I did have a piece already colored and, oh, here it is. There we go, I did find it. So I, I did Calypso Coral on this to make it coordinate with the kind of the monochromatic theme of this card. We'll put that on with the glue dot. Like that. And then let's just take our lighter blend and just kind of give those little leaves a little color too. like that. So now we've got just this sweet little card created, um, uh, you know, a masked negative so that you can put your greeting in there. Super, super easy, easy little technique. I hope your brain is churning a little bit thinking about what do I have in my stash that I could use. And I bet you've come up with a couple. So let me just show you a couple other things you could, you could use. These are um, called Forever Gold Laser Cut Specialty Paper. <clears throat> and you get um, three each of these two um, sheets here. So these can be used as masks as well. So I took this one that was just this beautiful little gold piece that would fit on the front of a card. And I just, you know, sponged all over it and took it off. And now there's a great little background on this card, stamped a greeting on there, super, super simple. Um, but yet it's got just a nice, a nice look to it. And then I did the same thing using um, one of these. This one has like a greeting um, for a greeting and then it has the little leaves attached. So I flipped it upside down and I used Pretty Peacock and I sponged, not sponged, but I used the blending brushes all around like that. So when I'm getting ready to put the card together now, I'm just gonna flip this over and it's going to create a great little um, background that's just opposite of what I you know sponged with the stencil and then to finish that off we'll just I embossed in gold a little greeting thinking of you and then we'll just put this plop this on top of a 
a card. Card base. Like, like that. So you can literally use just about anything. In fact, I just kind of punched out a bunch of different things that I have that I haven't even used yet. Um, this is a is a, a full dye background that would be great to use. Um, this goes to the Wild Rose stamp set. I think all three of these, no, this goes with this one. Um, so many of you have the um, Poppy bundle of dyes for that was really popular a year ago. And so if you cut these out on your basic white, and especially if you use thick basic white cardstock, you've got the positive and the negative. So you could sponge over this and then get a negative image underneath, or you could use the opening and then sponge different colors of leaves. So um, take a look at the dyes that you have because you will be surprised, I think, at what you can do with what you already have. Okay, I have one last thing for you. You guys are, I didn't realize I had so many things to show you, but um, I guess I do. One last thing with these beautiful colors. I cut out this die here, and this is from a new bundle that I haven't even played with very much yet. Simply Succulents. Here is the stamp set that that goes with. And then in the dies that coordinate with that, you get this full sheet um, die that has this detailed grouping of succulents. And then you get, of course, all the things to cut out the images in the stamp set and some labels, four different um, labels. So it's really, really, really cool. So I'm not gonna put a whole card together here. I just want to show you what I did after I cut it out. I definitely have way, way too many um, cards to show you today because now I'm everything's a mess. All right, so I'm gonna use this as a stencil first. I'm not gonna do the whole thing, I just wanna show you. So I took the same colors and I just kind of picked different flowers I guess succulents aren't flowers, are they? They kind of remind, this particular kind of succulent reminds me of a flower, but it's it's not, is it? All right, so I'm just gonna kind of do around each different one with the different colors like that. And this is just so cool because as you are making the stencil um, colored, you are also creating the negative image underneath at the same time and you can come up with two cards. So you get the idea here, what I'm doing. Just go through and color all of those flowers. And then of course, when you lift it up, you get the negative. And let me show you what those cards look like. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I wish you guys could see the um, floor of my craft room right now. Like I've cut out this thing three times and all those little pieces did not all get exactly into the garbage. So there is like a hot mess on the floor. So here is the one. So this is what the, this is, I took this piece after it was all colored and I just laid it back on white. And so now I've got the opposite stencil. And for some reason I have misplaced the other card. Oh boy, oh boy, it's gotta be here. Where is it? It's so cute too. Hmm, well, I'll have to post it on my blog post later this afternoon so you can see it, um, cause I can't get my hands on it for right now for some reason. Anyway, I created a card that after I did this whole thing as well. Um, and it just makes just, gorgeous, gorgeous cards. So um, definitely on Pinterest, you um, put in this stamp set and look at all the beautiful samples out there. And it's just amazing. So 
we have talked about stenciling today. So let me just kind of review some of the things that we've done. And I hope that this has inspired you to get out some of your inks and get out your sponges and start playing with, with the things that you have. Um, again, this butterfly bundle in March, it's going to be available for the next year. Um, but in March, if you purchase the bundle for me, you will get um, a free little sample paper pack of the butter, butterfly bijou paper. Um, if you order that also during March, I have a March special. Anybody who orders um, over $40 will get one little blending brush from me. These are on back order right now, but when they become available to order the last week in March, um, I will order them and then you will get that for free with an order um, in March as well. So I hope you learned something about stenciling today. I am just so thrilled that you um, watched this tutorial today. And I hope that you're inspired to get into your stash of products and get creating um, and make something beautiful and send it out into the world. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.